Hi, we're working through the proof uh, topic just now. We've just had an introduction to proof um, and we're going to launch into the example for different ways in which you can prove things to be true. This is actually the first part is actually the way in which you prove something's not true. In other words, this proof by counter example. The premise of it is very straightforward. If you have a conjecture and you find even one uh, example or one set of conditions where the conjecture doesn't work, then the whole proof for that whole conjecture goes out the window and it's back to the drawing board. Um, I suppose, for instance, if you were talking about the relationship between sides in a triangle and say you had a, a, a conjecture that said that the in a, in a triangle um, the square of the longest side is uh, equal to the square of the, the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Well, in, in many triangle situations, if we had, you know, eight and uh, six and five, uh, then we would have a situation where, uh, I mean, this is, uh, it would probably be done badly like this as well, but see if we put that these numbers in, clearly that's not going to work out. Uh, 36 and 25 do not equal 24. In other words, that, 8, 5 and 6, these numbers would prove that conjecture to be false. But we know that the, that conjecture uh, works for a limited uh, condition, and that is if the triangle is right angled. Okay, So being able to show that a situation doesn't work is a way of disproving it, but even if it doesn't work for that one, uh, we can find ways to limit uh, our situation so that we could come up with a maybe a revised conjecture. So it's not the end of the world, uh, although it could totally destroy uh, decades of somebody's work. Um, so here we go. Uh, let's have a couple of examples. When it comes to uh, our course, we're really looking at fairly straightforward um, situations where we've got a conditional statement. If something is true, then something else is true. And what we want to do is to show that the first statement, in this case, an inequality is true, but that the second one is not. Okay, So that's your, your goal, is to show that you can make the first statement true, but then show that the second statement can be false. So we're looking for values of a and b such that b squared is greater than a squared, but b is uh, then, but b is less than a. In other words, so in of course, in in all positive values, that would be a true uh, condition, b squared. But if a and b are positive, then both of these are always uh, true. But if we introduce negative values, then you can see that these this is not going to work. So if we were to say as our solution, um, we'll say let. And of course, there's many many uh, ways. Uh, values for which it doesn't work, okay? So let uh, say b equal a negative 5 and a equal 2, okay? Uh, then we can say b squared is equal to negative 5 squared, which is 25, and a squared is 2 squared, which is 4. And we can say then can say that uh, if 25 is greater than 4, i.e. we've demonstrated that b squared is greater than a squared. Okay. However, we're looking for b is greater than a. In this case here, of course, negative 5 is less than 2, i.e. We can say that b is less than a. In other words, we have shown that there's a break in uh, the implication here. And we can say here that we found a, a counterexample. We can say thus. The conjecture is not true. here, then b squared is greater than a squared, b is less than a. That's all you need to do. But what's really important is that you demonstrate that the first part is true and the second part is false. Okay, let's look at another example, you, similar idea. 
uh, you can maybe think about this, pause it, have a go yourself. Just prove the following statement that for all real numbers x, y and z, if x is greater than y, then xz is greater than yz. Okay, can you come up with any values for x, y and z uh, that would disprove that? Well, again, if, if we're dealing with only positive uh, integer values or real values, then that conjecture will always be uh, true. Uh, however, would there are uh, different situations uh, that we could come across. Again, uh, we could think about maybe negative values. If, uh, is if Z, maybe Z was negative, would that work? Uh, well, let's see. We're looking for, first of all, we've got to prove that X is greater than y. Okay, so let's say let uh, x equal uh, 4 and y equal 3. Uh, then we can say 4 is greater than 3, so x is greater than y. Okay, so that's a true statement. Uh, however, However, uh, let z equal, well what we're going to have to multiply uh, 4 and 3 by such that xz is less than yz. Well, if z is a negative value of some sort, uh, it would just say negative 2. Then we can say that xz is equal to 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8. And y z is 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. Okay, and here we can see that negative 8 is less than negative 6. In other words, we've shown that x z is less than y z, which is the opposite of what the conjecture says. Okay. So this is a this is a counter example. So we can say therefore the conjecture is false. As here when x is greater than y, then x z is less than y z. Okay, so again, it's it's not just about s writing down the numbers and saying, yep, those numbers will make it false. It's about going through the process of saying, first of all, yep, the, the first condition is met, but the second condition is not met, and that makes the conjecture uh, false. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. You can go on and, and work on a few uh, situations where you're trying to disprove conjectures.